it can be hard to pay attention to the details when there are so many things that are begging for our attention from text messages to emails to all sorts of things right from our apps on our phone all the dings and bings that we hear all day that are asking for our attention everywhere that it can be hard to quiet the mind and to pay attention to the small details. But the joy is in the details. Joy is in the details. And that can be something as small as calling your friend to just say hi. I love you, I care about you, I'm thinking about you, to sending someone or receiving a handwritten letter instead of an email. Details like buying someone a gift because it's not a special occasion, it's not your birthday, it's just you saw something that reminds them, reminds you of them. Joy can be in the details like remembering that Someone is having a hard day and checking in on them at the end of the day and saying, I hope your day went well. Joy is in the details like your friend telling you, oh, don't worry, it's fine, I'm gonna be okay. But you see in their eyes that there are tears welling up so you know it's important for you to stay. Joy is in the details. And it's all about being able to quiet our minds enough to settle down and allow ourselves to observe, to listen more than we speak, right? To take time out for others, to be of service. Joy is in the details. One of my favorite movies, is Sex in the City. And there is an awesome scene that I love in that movie that always moves me that takes place in the movie on New Year's Eve. Let me set the scene for you. So in the movie, Miranda, um, who is Carrie's best friend, Miranda is sitting at home alone on New Year's Eve and there is the TV on in the background. She has just said goodbye to her son, her little son. He looks like he's about six years old. Um, and he's going to spend the night with her husband, who she is currently separated from because he has cheated on her. So she's living alone right now. And she's sitting in her house, looking miserable and eating Chinese food. Now, the the film pants to Carrie, who is lying in her bed, trying to fall asleep. And Carrie has just recently gotten out of a long-term relationship because her would-be husband never showed up at the altar. So this New Year's Eve, she's just at home. She doesn't want to be bothered. She wants to just be alone and go to bed. She's not even willing to stay out for midnight. Well, as Miranda is sitting there, she picks up the phone and she calls Carrie. And Carrie's in bed, and so she answers in a really raspy voice, like, hello. <laughs> and Miranda says, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, I didn't know you were sleeping. I'm sorry. Go back to sleep. And Carrie says, no, no, no. It's okay. What, what's going on? And she says to Carrie, you know, I thought one of the perks of having family was that you didn't have to spend holidays alone. But here I am eating Chinese food and sitting alone. And Carrie said, oh, well, what, what do you need? You want me to come over? You want me to come see you? And Miranda says, no, no, I'll be fine. I'll be okay. Don't worry about it. Go, go back to sleep. I'm sorry I called you. I just, I just wanted to talk a little bit, but I'm, I'm fine. And Carrie says, okay, well, Happy New Year, Miranda. And Miranda says, Happy New Year, Carrie. And they both hang up the phone, and 
Carrie lies in bed for a little while trying to find fall back asleep. And you can tell that she's racing, her mind is racing and she's having all these thoughts. And then she jumps up out of her bed and she throws on right over her pajamas, her fur coat, and she's got her pajamas on. I think she throws on a necklace of pearls and she has her sock feet. She sticks her sock feet into her heels and she goes out into the snow. She tries to get a taxi. She can't get a taxi. So she ends up taking the subway and she's running and she's rushing through the snow. And Miranda's sitting in her apartment and she's watching the television and looking at her fortune cookie and just looking really frustrated and she hears a knock on the door and when she opens the door it's Carrie and they have this look that they give each other and this beautiful hug that they share and it's this hug of understanding of Carrie knowing that Miranda needed her she knew from listening to her voice on the phone on the other end of the phone that Miranda needed her. She was listening for details because joy is in the details. I love that scene because it highlights a lot about our lives. You know, we focus a lot on who is begging for our attention, what is dragging our attention away from other things that we don't pay attention to the small things. You know, if you look at animals, we can look more into this idea of, of paying attention to details. There's certain things that are required in order for us to be able to pay attention to details. And that starts with being able to take a pause, being able to quiet our minds enough to be open to observing the things that are around us, right? And you can practice this in nature by looking at the shapes of the leaves, by listening to the song of a bird, by hearing the, the leaves crush under your feet when you walk, by smelling how the air smells, or just looking around, looking up, observing, and seeing what you see. Nature can teach us a lot about paying attention to details. And for me, one of the things I always pay attention to is animals and how they react in nature, right? How sensitive they are to different sounds. If you look at animals, you can tell that they're very attuned and they're very observant. My dog, for example, her ears go up all the time. And you can tell that she can hear things that are on a different frequency from me. And she has a different awareness than I do. And sometimes I try to really focus in and listen to what, what is she hearing? What is she listening to? And I, I can sort of hear like a slight rustle of a paper or the rustle of fabric of a jacket when someone's coming up the stairs in my apartment building or something like that. But animals have this extreme sense of awareness. And awareness comes from energy. And we all know what that feels like. We've all been in a situation where we tap into energy. We can feel other people's energy if we allow it. And that ability to observe, to tap into energies, to tap into higher frequencies is really important. It's a really important skill for us to practice. For me, and one level of awareness is my ability to look for signs and symbols. I'm always looking for signs and symbols from my ancestors. I'm looking for signs and symbols and things that I see often, things that I see repeatedly. And one of the things that I see often are birds. I have a very close connection to birds. I feel very um, spiritually connected to them. Some may call birds spirit animals. I call them spirit guides. I believe that birds have a really special gift because they are messengers. They're able to travel between heaven and earth, right? They can fly. They have the power of flight. And so I'm always paying attention to birds. And my two birds that I believe are my spirit guides or spirit animals are owls and blue jays, but especially owls. And that's why on my arm, I have a tattoo of an owl, as you can probably sort of see. 
Um, and as the spirit guide being an owl for me is, I'm always looking for how that owl shows up in my life. Uh, a few years ago now, maybe a year and a half ago, my mom had knee surgery. And when she had this knee surgery, it was hard for me because she's such a strong person. You know, it's hard when we see strong people in our lives go through tough things. But she was going through a lot of pain at this point in her life. And she needed to have this major surgery where she was going to have both of her knees replaced. And I was super nervous about this. So I remember the day that we were going to go to the hospital for her surgery. I woke up super early from my apartment. I traveled to her um, house. I picked her up and we were trying to look for a taxi, but we weren't having any success. And then right at the moment where we were like, oh, what are we gonna do this? bus that rarely runs showed up and it was the perfect bus because it was going to take us right in front of the hospital and we made it just in time and the bus it was like perfect timing because it was like totally aligned with what we needed at that moment you know the universe will align with you and show you at the moment when you need it the most that it's there for you we took that bus, we got to the hospital in perfect timing, we filled out the paperwork, and as, as she's filling out the paperwork, a staff member comes and escorts her upstairs to get herself changed and ready for the surgery, and they direct me to um, a place where I can sit, it's like a holding room, until she's ready to go into the operating room, and I get to say my last, um, you know, well wishes to her before she goes into surgery. So I'm sitting there feeling anxious and they call my name and I go into the holding room of the operation room and there are all these doctors around and you know they're telling me about the surgery and I'm listening and I'm just feeling like so freaked out but I say to them thank you for taking care of my mom you know treat her well okay take care of her okay and they they all laugh and they say she'll be fine and right before they take my mom away. There's like final paperwork that we have to sign and um, that the, you know, that we have to go over. And this nurse comes to collect the paperwork and ask some final questions. And immediately when she sat down, I felt this strong energy, you know, I felt this really strong energy. And I, I was like, what's, what's going on? And I turned and I looked and on her name tag, that was holding, you know, like attaching to her pocket, holding the name tag onto her pocket. There was this pendant and the pendant was an owl. And when I noticed it, I felt this instant feeling of calm and my heart smiled because I knew that my mom was going to be okay because my spirit guide was with her right by her side. And I knew everything was going to be fine. And everything was fine. I mean, she had a great surgery. She healed well. She, you know, she was recovering well. And while she was in the hospital, she was there for a few weeks. I went to go visit her every day and you know she had to wear the hospital gown and every time i would come visit her i'd say you know what can i get you how can i help you feel better what can i do and my mom you know she's a very strong woman and she said oh, i'm fine don't worry i'm okay but every time i came into the room i would notice that she would tuck her hair back behind her ears and she would smooth smooth it down, you know, comb through it with her hands. And as if she was trying to look more presentable in her hospital bed, in her hospital gown. And it always used to make me chuckle a little bit in, you know, just admiration for my mom, trying to look presentable, trying to be as, you know, well put together as possible, even though she's gone through this big surgery and she was trying to heal. And I noticed she would do that every time I came. She would push her hair back and like try to keep it neat and sit up and be like, mom, you look fine. 
don't worry. And when my dad would call on FaceTime, she would do the same thing with her hair. And then I sat down next to her one day when I was visiting and I had this vision of this picture that we took when I was maybe like three or four years old and my hair was in two little puffs and I was wearing this blue dress with a flower on it and my mom, she has this beautiful long thick black hair at the time and now it's like black and a little gray and she used to pull it back in this long braid and she had her thick rimmed 80s style red glasses on looking awesome and I remember that image and then a message came to me and the message was braid your mom's hair so I listened to the message I sat with it for a moment and I looked at my mom and I said mom let me braid your hair and she looked at me, kind of surprised, and she said, oh, oh, okay, sure, yeah, okay. <laughs> and she said, I want two braids going down the side, just like this, which are basically two cornrows going down, right? And now, mind you, I've had short hair for the majority of my childhood, and then my hair was permed, and when I did have my hair done, I always like went to a salon or had friends do it for me, so, I didn't really know how to do hair. I hadn't really braided someone's hair, especially in cornrows. So this was gonna be a, an exciting adventure for me. But I told her all of this and she said, don't worry, I'll show you, I'll teach you. So I said, okay. So she guided me through it and you know, I, I didn't do too badly. It was not too shabby for my first time braiding my mom's hair like that. Even, even her roommate, who was pretty awesome, her roommate who had her same birthday, they had the same birthday, her roommate approved, her, her hospital roommate. So I was proud. But, you know, joy is really in the details because it wasn't about just braiding my mom's hair. It was more about sharing a moment together, sharing this connection, right? Being able to massage her scalp for her and comb through her hair for her and, and do her braids for her and helping her to feel comfortable helping her to feel a little bit of pleasure while she's in this really challenging situation and it was about this connection between mother and daughter this intimacy right in this parent-child relationship, mother and daughter relationship that we typically don't think about, but is so important and so vital. You know, that connection was key. And a lot of times we think, you know, that we have to do these grandiose things for people. And we have to do all these big major things to show people that we love them. But really, it's, it's about the simple things. It's about the fact that you listen, that you observe, that you're aware, that you're paying attention. I can't tell you how beautiful of a masterpiece of a smile my mom had when I was braiding her hair and, and how important that moment was. Joy is in the details. And if you allow yourself to listen, if you allow yourself to quiet your mind, if you allow yourself to observe, you will see how you can best serve others and you can best give love to yourself. Joy is in the details. Are you listening? Today, I'm going to challenge myself to really ask myself how I'm paying attention to things. I'm gonna challenge myself and I encourage you to join me to ask myself, am I rushing through my day or, I'm taking, or am I taking time to pay attention to details? Am I 
trying to just give all my attention to things that happen to be pulling me in this direction and that direction? Or am I taking time to just think for a moment? Am I listening to people speaking to me? Or am I just wanting to get to the next thing and nodding my head, but I'm not really present? Awareness comes from observing, being present, being in the moment. Allow yourself to pay attention to the details. Joy is always there if you let it be. Allow yourself to pay attention today to the details. Joy is in the details. Are you listening? Thank you so much for listening. This is my seventh speech on my 25 Days of Joy Challenge, where every day I'm talking about a topic in joy. If this video resonated with you, please share it. Please send it to one of your friends. Please give it a like, give it a love, write me a comment. It helps me know that you're listening, and I always appreciate that. Have an amazing, awesome, beautiful day. And remember, pay attention to the details. That's where the joy is. Have a beautiful day.